I'm kind of a coffee junkie, so when Starbucks opened in my neighborhood, I made it a ritual to visit the place every morning. My office was on the way, so I would stop by the Starbucks drive through get my coffee, and head to work. The Starbucks was pretty busy in the morning, but me being a regular, never had to wait more than five minutes. But it felt excruciatingly long the last time I visited Starbucks. In fact, now, I don't go near Starbucks. I don't even like coffee anymore. The smell of coffee suffocates the air around me. It reminds me of him and how he made my life miserable. One day, I was waiting in the queue at the Starbucks drive through on a rainy morning. Even though the weather was bad, people were still out on the streets. Everyone was rushing to their workplaces. By the time I reached the window, people had started to get impatient, honking their horns, making loud noises. I took out some cash and, without looking at the window, said, My usual, Liam. Thanks. But when no one took the money from my hand or even uttered a single word, I got confused. I turned my head to the drive through window and saw a completely new face. It was a man in his late 40s. He had a pointy face with a goatee at the end. I don't know why, but he reminded me of a goat. He was looking at me with an angry frown. Um, sorry, where's Liam? Liam's gone! Do you want me to take your order? I ordered and waited with a grumpy face. He was rude, but I wasn't in any mood to start a brawl early morning. I took my coffee and drove away. The very next day, I went to meet a client at Starbucks. I was waiting inside the shop when I smelt a strong odor of sweat mixed with burnt coffee. Before I could turn around, that same barista from the drive-thru appeared in front of me. Have you ordered already? Um, no, I'm waiting for someone. Is it your boyfriend? What the? That's none of your business, dude. Seeing me raise my voice, a few customers looked at my table. The barista smiled and said in a low, creepy voice, I'm John. I hope you have a wonderful day. And then he left. What a jackass. First he was rude to me, and now he's asking about my love life? The client arrived, and our conversation lasted for an hour. The entire time, I could feel eyes on me. Like someone was watching me from the counter. Every time I looked there, I could see someone hiding behind the kitchen wall. The entire night, I could not sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I could see John staring at me without blinking. The smile on his face was huge. I woke up late the next morning and had to rush to the office. As much as I hated the idea of going to Starbucks, my body screamed for a cup of coffee. By 11.30, I was in the queue of the Starbucks drive through I wanted to keep it short this time. When I arrived at the window, John was already standing there. Got late, huh? One large cappuccino, make it quick. I patiently waited and disregarded anything that came out of his mouth. Once he handed me my coffee, I went to pay him. He took the money and said, Did you party a lot last night? Is that why you're late to work today? I put my car in drive when he suddenly inserted half of his body into my car, almost hunching over my face. If you stop answering me, I'll make sure you never talk. None of your boyfriends will be able to save you. And that pushed me over the edge. I splashed the hot coffee on his face and gave him a tight slap, buzzing his left eardrum. He backed away and I started to scream. Who the hell do you think you are? Are you nuts? I want to talk to the manager. Which stupid ass employed this moron? Chaos took place. The Starbucks manager came out and I was pulled aside. John stood there quietly, but I kept on screaming. I'm going to call 911. I will sue all of you. Just wait. The manager stopped me and insulted John in front of everyone. He then fired him then and there. I was offered a month of free coffee as a gesture of apology. When I was driving away, I could see John standing on the side of the street. He was waving at me. Ugh, bloody creep! Before getting into the elevator, I walked to the bin in the corner to dump the coffee cup. And that's when I noticed it. 
the words, secret message was written on the cup with a black marker. A straight line was drawn to the foot of the cup. Whoever wrote those words also struck out a few more words on the cup. And now it said, Careful, you're extremely hot. I called the cops and informed them about John, the way he was behaving. I feared he might turn out to be some crazy stalker. I stayed with one of my friends that night. Around 5 a.m. in the morning, I got a call from the local sheriff, and he gave me the horrible news. John snuck up inside the manager's apartment and slit his throat with a pocket knife. He was arrested from his house after the surveillance footage caught him coming out of the manager's house in the middle of the night. I felt responsible for making the manager a target of a deranged psychopath, but there's no way I would have guessed the heights of John's madness. I'm glad that he couldn't harm me, and for the rest of his life, he will rot in jail. The story you just saw is loosely based on this creepy incident uploaded from a TikTok account. The owner of the account is a 20-year-old woman who went to the local Starbucks for her usual morning coffee. But once she made it back to her car, she noticed the barista had written something on the cup. As she checked, her stomach dropped. The Starbucks barista had left a creepy note for her. On the top of the cup, the Starbucks employee had written, Secret Message. He'd also drawn an arrow down to the small print on the back of the cup. On there, he had blacked out certain words in the sentence so that it read, Careful, you're extremely hot. Even though the woman laughed at first, getting awkward with this sudden attention, but quickly she let out her worries, mentioning that she's never going back to that Starbucks again. She received mixed opinions after sharing the photos of the cup. Some said she wrote it herself, while others said she needs to be careful of a stalker in process. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. This happened in the summer after I graduated high school. My local Starbucks was hiring and I needed a job. They put me on the night shift, working from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. One night, around 1 a.m., I was sitting alone in the shop. The streets were pretty clear except for the occasional car passing through the complex. I was taking advantage of the free Wi-Fi and watching videos on my phone when I heard a small bang behind me. A stack of cups was lying on the floor. I picked them up and I went back to my browsing. Again, five minutes later, the cups fell down. I figured the air from the AC knocked over the cups. I groan as I go to pick them up and wonder if I should turn the AC off. As I was in the middle of cleaning up the mess, a bang came from the back kitchen area. That's where we make the desserts. I was confused and slightly freaked out. I entered the kitchen, swinging the door closed behind me. I saw nothing out of the ordinary except the Starbucks poster that we had hanging in the kitchen had fallen down. I rolled it up and sat it on the counter, making a mental note to tell the manager that it fell down the next shift. I went over to the thermostat to turn off the AC since the draft was knocking everything around. I turned it off and the next 30 minutes were silent. I was getting tired so I made myself a coffee. I was sipping on my coffee, browsing Facebook, when my headset beeped. That was strange, since we barely ever had any business at this time of night, but not unheard of. Welcome to Starbucks. How would you like your order? I looked up at the monitor, but nothing was there. That same thing happened several times, up to the point of 2.30. My headset kept beeping every two minutes, but when I looked at the camera, there was nobody there. A few seconds later, the coffee machine malfunctioned, spewing foam and coffee everywhere. I freaked out and turned it off immediately. I remember turning it off after making my coffee, so I had no idea how this happened. I needed to use the restroom, so I went quickly in case any customers came. Coming back, I saw Starbucks cups stacked in the shape of a pyramid on the counter. That was extremely weird since they obviously couldn't stack themselves. It was probably the teenagers, I thought. I was debating whether or not to call the cops since they were harassing me, but I decided to wait for a little more in case they come back. I glanced down at my phone for about 10 seconds, and when I looked back up, there were cups everywhere. Stacks and stacks of cups in the shape of a pyramid. 
I guess around 50 to 70 stacks. I was terrified. Something was here at the shop with me, and whatever it was, it wasn't human. I scanned the place, but there was not a trace. Not a trace of anything. I knew my boss would flip a lid if she found this, so I started unstacking them. When I finished, it was around 3.15. I just wanted my shift to be over so I could get out of this place. Then, there came the bang. It was from the kitchen again. As I stepped into the kitchen, the lights went out. I stood in the darkness looking around. My heart was racing in fear. I didn't know what to expect. Right then, I heard a humming sound echoing. The sound was coming from the kitchen sink. I walked close to it and took my face closer to the drain pipe. Yes, the humming was coming from there. Drops of sweat crowded my forehead. Is this all real? Am I really hearing a woman's voice humming from the other side of the drain pipe? I closed one eye and tried to get a good look inside the pipe hole. Ah! What the? Suddenly, the tap started running, but instead of water, strong, brewed hot coffee started pouring out from it. The force was so strong that the coffee overflowed the kitchen sink, dripping from the edges onto the kitchen floor. I watched in horror because it all seemed so unreal, and then the tap made a rumbling sound, like someone was stuck in it. Sprinkles of coffee came out of it, stopping its heavy flow, and then a hat squeezed out from the small tap. Yes, a giant bulbous head of a woman, only she wasn't human. Her hair was like octopus legs, something slimy was dripping from them. Her demonic eyes were yellow pupils on black eyeballs. I've never seen anything like this. Instead of a nose, she only had two nostrils, and her mouth has no lips. She had gills like a fish instead of ear. Slowly, her huge, slimy, half-human, half-fish body started coming out from the tap. The sloppy, grotesque sound echoed inside my brain as she pulled herself out of the small hole. Her jaw was hollow and had huge, sharp fangs. She made a chuckling sound from her throat, and I got up screaming. Ah! I rushed to the exit and stopped after reaching the nearest Walmart. A few people saw me and sensed my trouble. They asked me what had happened, and I took them back to the Starbucks, saying I'd seen a horrible creature coming out of the tap. But when we all went back, everything was just as it was supposed to be. No mess, no broken light, not a single drop of coffee on the kitchen sink. That humming sound was long gone as well. Ten years have passed and I still remember every detail of her demonic face. I don't drink coffee from Starbucks because I fear that coffee is the creature's gateway to our human world. The story you just saw is loosely based on the infamous story behind the famous Starbucks logo. That image in the center of the Starbucks logo is not a mermaid. She's actually a mythological siren. A female creature that lured mariners to destruction by her unworldly singing. In Greek mythology, the sirens were dangerous yet beautiful creatures who enticed nearby sailors to shipwreck on the rocky coast and die. Starbucks got its name from the author Herman Melville's Moby Dick novel. However, the famous siren logo came to fruition after the founders discovered her image while scouring old marine books. In 1971, the original Starbucks opened in the port city of Seattle. Since coffee beans typically traveled overseas on large container ships, the founders decided to use a seductive siren logo that would lure coffee lovers to its stores and seductive she was. The original Starbucks logo was a bare-breasted female siren with two serpentine tails spreading apart. Some people even claim that the Starbucks logo is cursed. By turning the original Starbucks logo upside down, you can see the image of Satan. In 2014, Starbucks got in trouble after its employees were drawing satanic pentagrams in the number 666 in the foam of coffee. Do you think the famous Starbucks logo was hiding something terrifying like this? Let us know in the comments. I work as a barista at Starbucks. 
I usually worked the morning shifts as it brought more customers, hence more tips. One morning, I was walking toward the Starbucks a couple blocks from my apartment. I noticed a woman sitting on the sidewalk in front of the door. She had a trolley bag beside her. At first, I just assumed it was someone in desperate need of a coffee. But as I got closer, the dirty, tattered clothes told me she was homeless. The woman was rubbing the bottom of her forearms against the concrete. Suddenly, she noticed me and got up, quickly walking away. I walked up to the door and looked down at the spot where she was rubbing her forearms. The concrete was stained a dark red, blood. I figured I'd wash it off with some hot water before opening the shop, so I quickly brushed it off, blaming it on addiction. After getting as much blood off the sidewalk as possible, and sanitizing the door handle of the hobo grease, I opened the shop and prepared for the morning rush. Here's your coffee. Have a nice day. I and my coworkers were in full swing at work. One after the other, customers came and we handled the usual Starbucks mugs filled with brewing hot coffee. I was so invested in my job that I didn't realize. <laughs> Jesus! It was that homeless woman, standing in front of me now. Her face had a disgusting smile, flashing her rotten teeth. She slammed a $10 bill on the counter and said, Once you're done screaming like a little girl, make me coffee. Um, I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. A flush of red covered her face. She got very angry and said, Why? It's not about you doing anything, ma'am. It's just... I know what you're trying to say. That I'm not welcome into Starbucks because I'm homeless. Because I don't look good enough to be a part of this crap store, right? She spat on the floor of the shop, upsetting all the other customers. And I was in no mood to tolerate that. Ma'am, if you don't leave, I'll have to call security. You can have your coffee for free, but please leave after that. Coffee for free? <laughs> so now he wants to be the big guy after insulting a poor old woman. Fine, fine, I'll show you what I can do. Saying this, she suddenly walked towards a table. She then picked up a chair and threw it on the floor, creating a huge ruckus. People started leaving the Starbucks in fear. Somebody stop that lady! I went to grab her, but she elbowed me in the eye. It was that same bloody elbow that left a stain on the wall moments back. As much as I got hurt, I also got her blood in my eye. My co-workers helped me get up. The lady grabbed her trolley bag and while walking towards the exit said, Now you'll know my pain. I didn't understand why she said that at the time. But the rest of the day, I served the customers with a black eye. After work, I came home and went to take a shower. I was done for the day. While washing my body with soap, I looked down at my arms and noticed some light red dots on my skin, similar to mosquito bites. No itching or burning, they were just there. After examining them for a bit, I ignored them. The next morning I woke up and walked to the bathroom. When I looked in the mirror, I couldn't believe it. My skin was extremely puffy and blotchy. Several areas were a deep red and felt bumpy to the touch. But the worst part was how itchy the infected areas had become. Luckily I didn't have work that morning, so I went straight to the doctor. The doctor looked over my body and asked me several questions. She concluded that I simply had a bad case of hives. She gave me an injection to bring down the reaction. I picked up some anti-itch cream on the way home and went to bed for a nap. But as time passed, my rashes grew bigger and worse. Luckily there was no spot on my face so I could still go to work. I started wearing full sleeves to hide the marks. But my god the itching. I itched all day. It felt like tiny bugs with spiky legs were crawling underneath my clothes. I would rub my arms against the counter in an attempt to secretly scratch them. When I was behind the coffee machine, I would scratch furiously at my clothes before coming out with a smile on my face and calling for the customer to pick up their drink. When there weren't any customers in the shop, I would run to the bathroom and scratch my arms and legs, chest and stomach, shoulders and back, and scrub my hands as much as possible. After a few hours, I went to the bathroom and noticed I was bleeding, with scratch marks all over my arms, chest, and stomach. The bumpy texture grew worse as well. The bumps had formed into clusters and clumps. The heat from the coffee maker was making me sweat as well, which began to irritate the blisters that were beginning to form. I began to feel delirious. I've never fainted or passed out before, but I felt like I was going to. I began to feel lightheaded. Hey, this isn't a grande pumpkin spice latte! A customer's stern voice brought me back to my senses. Excuse me? This is a tall. I asked for a grande. With a couple of customers in line, 
I politely asked him to wait and went to take back the coffee cup when I ended up screaming. <laughs> Once I touched the coffee cup, a layer of my skin got stuck to it like a sticky note. The customer stepped back in disgust and everyone stared at me like I was some freak in a scary movie. That night I was fired. The shop closed early. My manager told me that they can't compromise the hygiene of the place. The apartment where I stayed banned me from entering. Tenants don't want to live with someone who has infections all over their skin. I live on the streets now, just like that homeless woman. My skin feels like fire ants crawling all over my body. I'm sure you've seen those photos of third degree burns that people get when they spill boiling water or grease on them. That's what these look like now. My hair is falling out. My teeth are starting to fall out too. I now know what that homeless woman meant when she said, Now you'll know my pain. <laughs> the story you just saw is loosely based on this footage recorded at a Starbucks outlet by a customer. The customer went to Starbucks for his usual morning coffee when he saw a woman walk into the store holding a trolley bag. She had very bad hygiene. She was screaming at one of the baristas while throwing fits of outrage all over the place. The woman screamed at the top of her lungs, shouting profanities to the certain barista. Her behavior was so shocking that everyone at the store stopped and watched her go crazy. At one point, the woman even walked to the nearby table and grabbed an empty chair. She picked up the chair and stomped it on the floor furiously, even before leaving the store. She cursed the Starbucks outlet and the barista, giving everyone trauma for life. 